In STEM is a holistic mentorship and skills development program. We invite you to bring your whole selves into this virtual learning space. So before I turn it over to the experts, let's pause for a moment of mindfulness. And thank you so much for the opportunity to participate in this valuable program. My name is P.K. Morrow, Vice President of Clinical Development at Amgen. I am a medical oncologist, hematologist by training, previously training at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Since coming to Amgen, I have had the joy and opportunity of um, helping to develop important molecules that have helped to treat oncology patients with cancer. So I'd say one, time management is really that ability and it's, it's an individualized ability to really organize and plan your time well in order to be able to address the most prioritized components of your day from a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's a common thread and a common thread of success that runs through your life, whether you're in school or in an internship or residency or whether you're in the workplace. As I was going through um, college, I was noticing that I actually was, I was picking up or you know able to pick up on um, the different concepts in class, but I actually wasn't managing my time well outside of class to make sure that I was reinforcing those things in order to, for me to do well academically. I really needed someone to help me to think through how to manage my time, particularly early on within the first year of college. <laughs> and what I did was I went actually um, you know, to, uh, to peers, um, those who were either within my grade who clearly were doing much, a much better job than I was, or those who were a year or two above. And I also spoke honestly to a counselor about this, um, talking, and, it's, and it really sometimes needs to be a personalized approach as to whom you reached out to, because there's a level of comfort in being able to speak to that person um, and not worry that the person is judging you and that there's always good intent on both sides. So, you know, in each person's life, that may be someone different. It could also be your roommate, right? Or, you know, or your roommate's boyfriend. So there's, there's a multitude of, of folks that you can ask um, who you perceive can help you. And, and what you would, I think, is easiest is to say is just to be humble and transparent about the fact. Um, in my case, I would be saying, Look, I'm, I am. I feel like I'm grasping these classes, but somehow, you know, when I get home, um, I'm not managing my time well, and so, you know, I'm not getting started on studying my tests on time, or you know, my projects are super last minute, and I'm going to Target in order to buy the, you know, the materials, you know, at like 11 p.m. at night, and so just being transparent about that and asking them, what do you think are maybe one, two, three, just black and white things that I can start doing today to make that better. Um, and they, I think almost everyone I've ever approached about this, they love the humility of, of admitting that I don't have all the right answers because, you know, it's wonderful to have folks, you know, who have that humility and self-awareness about themselves. And, um, you know, in my case, folks have been able to help me to say, well, this is what I've done. You know, I've made sure, you know, when I got home that I would at least, you know, rewrite my notes, you know, um, right away so that I still remember them, for example, or, you know, or I made sure that I, you know, transcribed this quickly so, and it didn't have to be perfect. Um, which was a, a big lesson for a, a lot of us, but it had to be good enough so that then, like, you know, a week later, I could really go back and, and start the memorization process, something like that. I used to be a chronic procrastinator, and I am, I continued the state to be married to a chronic procrastinator, so <laughs> I know this world very well. Um, thank you for the question. <laughs> so one thing that I... You know, I, I think that a lot of us, when we procrastinate, and I don't want to assume that the folks on this call or, or who are listening are, but for, at least for myself, one of the things that I 
um, you know, the reasons I tended to procrastinate were one, I was prioritizing something else, you know, and it could be like literally watching a movie over, you know, a, a project. <laughs> And um, two, sometimes there was that kind of fear of the unknown. Oftentimes, you tend to procrastinate when you don't really know how to jump into it. You know, it could be your um, your um, professor says, well, I need you to write this essay on X. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't really enjoy the topic. So it just starts to get put off and put off and put off. And then, you know, it ultimately... It gets started because it's potentially due within 24 hours. So, um, and so what I've learned is one um, confidence in yourself, which is confidence in the ability that you are going to be able to address this. You may not be able to address it by yourself. You may need to get help, right? With, you know, from a teacher or a colleague or a friend, but you will be able to address it, whether it be an essay or a project, etc. So. That reduces the fear of, well, you know, I don't even want to get started, you know. And the second is just the understanding, and it, and, it, and it becomes reinforced with more and more time, that every time you do a project early, it pays off in droves. Because the first time you, you got a project done early or on time, in my case, on time was always just the best thing I could do, um, on time, then I um, would look back and say, well, that was a lot easier. I mean, honestly, it was probably 10 times easier than, than if I had waited because I don't know if those on the call can uh, relate, but many times when I used to procrastinate, by the time I got to the project, I would have a question for the teacher, but it was already midnight. And so, of course, he or she was not available. So, um, you know, getting those things done much earlier is so satisfying. One is, um, you know, one of our former presidents, Dwight Eisenhower, used to say that the urgent is not always important and the important is not always urgent. And what that means is that when you look at your day, you have to determine and prioritize what to do first, in the middle, and at the end. And the things you should keep in mind when you're doing that is, one, think about those things that are important to get done so that someone can take action or you can take action based upon that. For example, if someone is asking you to analyze um, you know, a set of data, you know, this happens at, at my work, um, you want to be able to analyze that data um, urgently potentially so that, that you can then provide them with the analysis and then they can make potentially an important decision that affects patients or affects the company. That is important and it's urgent. There are other things um, in which you can um, get done because you look at it and you say, you know what? I can get this done because it will take me five minutes and that person will then be able to take, take action upon it right away. That's also something I would prioritize. And then there are the slew of things that are neither important nor urgent. Um, and y y we all have those in mind, you know, things in which you are potentially reviewing, reading um, a review article, for example, on some uh, on, on a certain topic. That's something that is is nice to have, but it may be something that's best um, to allow to occur, you know, later in the day or potentially, you know, if someone's asked you um, to participate in a work stream, but it's actually outside of your area of expertise, it's, it's never a bad idea to think back to yourself and say, should I say yes or should I say no? Uh, one of my former bosses used to say, if you always say yes, then it stops meaning something. And it's really, really true. Ultimately, you should also prioritize what you keep on that to-do list on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it should all be something that either brings you joy, brings you important information or learning, or something that can help others. Um, if you keep those kind of things in mind, then you'll be able to determine which things you say yes to and which things you say no to. There's an important other saying um, by Mark Twain, which if I just um, abbreviate it, says, you know, eat frogs for breakfast. Um, and what that means is sometimes doing those unpleasant things early on in the day are actually helpful. Um, and the reason they're helpful is because then you've done it <laughs> and you're not spending the whole day dreading that task. Um, and I, I have uh, put that into practice in my own life many, many times. Sometimes 
I, you know, I will wake up and think, well, I need to do this. This is not going to be the most fun conversation that I have for the rest of the day, but I'm going to schedule it for 8 a.m. so that that person and I can have this discussion. And also, you know, we can come forward with saying, like, we, we had the discussion. We can get the action items from it. And it may not be the most pleasant, but it'll also be done. And there will no be no sense of dread for myself or the other individual. So I think that's one thing that's really helpful. So one thing that you can do for yourself is really to break up your day or month or year into these bite-sized chunks, right? Make sure that you look at your year, for example, and determine you know, what you want to, for example, accomplish within the first three months, the second three months, et cetera. Have that short and long-term plan. It, and prioritize like yourself, prioritize yourself by sitting down and potentially even writing it down. Write down, in a year, I would like to have gotten this done. How do I get it done? And um, it you and, and at the end of the year, you can look back. You know, if you're any, anything like the rest of us, you won't have accomplished all of those things. I think it's unrealistic to believe that. But you may have accomplished, you know, three out of five, three out of five of those things, or four out of five, or maybe all of them. Who knows? And you've heard before the saying, um, perfection is the worst enemy of good, right? And oftentimes I feel like all of us, as we become stronger students and stronger colleagues, we all want everything to be so perfect, um, which is really 100% perfect. And I think in many projects, 90% to 95% is quite good. And so one thing that I've also needed to prioritize in my life that I would urge you to do um, is to prioritize that good. That 90 to 95% is usually very good. Um, it's, a, it's a great product. And that extra potentially infinity time that it will take you to get 100% to 100% is oftentimes not worth it within your day or within your career. We hope you found this useful. For more videos in this series, please visit us at nationalmedals.org backslash instep.